uh, even though I, I, I've lived and, and loved and breathed farming uh, all the way up until uh, really this year, um, I'm really ready to walk away from it now. If, if that is going to be the future, um, I don't want to be a part of it. They own everything from, from seed companies to, to chemical companies to all of it. And they have, you know, and I really, they, they're looking to get control of the farm guys. And they get control of the farm guys and then pretty much we're just serfs out here working on the land. Basically, we've lost the guaranteed right that we have always had to save our seed from year to year. I feel so strongly about the right of farmers to be able to use their own seed. And uh, when I look back, um, my grandparents left their homeland in, in, in Europe and came to the United States and Canada to have a new life, to be free, to use the seeds and do what they want. And I never ever want to have that right taken away. The whole world is against what's happening here and our government is sticking up for these corporations. Uh, wouldn't you rather have the, the world on your side and tell these corporations, look, maybe you don't need to, uh, to, be, to be raping the farmers quite this bad. You know, you're already uh, one of the most powerful economic entities in the world. Um, when is enough is, it, is enough enough? Uh, how much uh, power and money do you need? You want it all? The effect of being shut out of the European market is directly attributable to the fact that we don't know where GMO is in this province anymore. It, um, it pollinates very easily and as a result there is nobody who can say with certainty that they don't have any GMO canola on their farms. Our organic market uh, right now is largely to the Europe and of course uh, uh, Europe and rightfully so is zero tolerance on genetically modified wheat or anything GMO. Uh, it will only be a matter of time before we will lose that market. We've heard from uh, consumers in Japan, our main export market for wheat, and in the uh, European countries that they do not want genetically modified wheat will not buy it from us and will not even buy genetic buy any wheat from North Dakota if they know that there is genetically modified wheat grown anywhere in the state. Economically it's a disaster for North Dakota and it would be a total wipeout of our export. Roundup Ready wheat if it's introduced is going to be a very serious marketing problem. All our sales now have been cut off to Europe. Many countries of the world will not buy our canola. So why should I be penalized? Because my neighbor grew GMO canola. We raise these crops to sell to foreign nations. They will not accept GMO. What do we do now when they've contaminated our entire soybean industry? The uh, salesman of, uh, of a company like Monsanto will tell you the potentials for all the good things, many of which will never be realized. Never tell you what the downsides are, most of which will be realized. Our neighbors that have Roundup Ready soybeans this year their fields look pitiful. They're full of weeds. I'd be willing to bet whatever kind of bet you know, wager you want to put down in the fields that we just looked at that my conventional beans will out yield the Roundup Ready soybeans by quite a margin. You may be using a cheaper chemical this year, but next year you're going to have to use a more expensive one to get rid of those Roundup resistant plants. In four years, we found that it 
putting a gene in doesn't make it more nutritious. It wasn't a bigger yielder. In fact, in many cases, it was poorer quality and less. And most of all, farmers tell me now they are using from six to 10 times more chemical to try and get rid of it because now it has become a super weed. We grow, we re raised some when they first came out. Uh, we were excited about the new technology, uh, not, re not realizing at that time the pitfalls of it, uh, that foreign countries might not buy it. Uh, it hasn't been tested enough to find out if it's really harmful and uh, not realizing that the cross-pollination would cause this kind of problem. We can't manage that technology. Once it's released into the environment, it's out of our control. And no matter what we do, we're not gonna, we're not gonna manage it. We're on the slippery slope and um, you know, it's not going to take much to, to change things. Um, five years from now, I don't know, I might have a huge problem I have no control over. There isn't a single organic farmer growing canola in Western Canada now because you can't guarantee it to be GMO free. I would say any country that's free of GMO, keep it out of there until it's tested that it's proven as safe as all the conventional. No matter how long it takes, don't let it in the country. Because once you do, your entire food chain is going to be contaminated. And this new pollen that they've been producing is different. It is theirs, their responsibility. The uh, uh, idea that uh, you can place this into nature and not and absolve yourself of the responsibility of it is uh, a ludicrous one. Let's go slow. Let's figure out what's going to happen with it. What consequences does it have for the environment around us? How are you going to control the pollen drift? There's so many areas that are just need to be addressed and they're, they're, they're not looking at it. We're losing biodiversity specifically because farmers are growing a narrower and narrower selection of seed in their fields. And if they want to save their own seed, they're no longer sure they'll be able to do so legally. There are other ways that are less disruptive of the environment to do the same thing and that are much more in the control of farmers and leaves them much more in control of their own operations than uh, buying Monsanto's technology. Basically my lifestyle, my farm practices and you know the next five or six years could be very much in jeopardy as an organic farmer if, uh, if I can't keep it under control on my own farm. are not only threatening your own security, you are threatening the security of your neighbors. You're endangering other people in your community if you decide to grow this particular plant. Never ever sign a document, any paper, that gives them the right to take your, your, the life-giving form away from you. Seeds of life are so important. Never give up that freedom. I would urge other farmers anywhere to really think before they get into growing a genetically modified crop. Really think about where your market is, about what it's going to do to your soil, about what it's going to do to your neighbor's crops, um, about what it's going to do to your ability to save seed. Always be able, never give up your right to use your own seed because if you give that right up, being able, not being able to use your own seed, you'll be like a serf uh, of the land, and, and you're back to the feudal system. Our costs of input costs have skyrocketed, and yet our prices for our commodities have actually gone down. Forces farmers to get bigger and bigger, uh, longer hours, very stressful. 
there are so many other ways to get the same results that cost less, that are lower tech, that individual farmers can retain ownership of. Not all farmers in America love this stuff. There's a great many of us who feel used by these big companies. Um, there are a great many of us who are fighting hard against these companies and feel like we're fighting for our lives here on these farms.